Hey there guys, Matthew here, joined by Liv for another review of Doctor Who Series 12. And today we are here to review Episode 3, written by Ed Heim, Orphan 55, which is basically the Doctor and her companions land on a planet which they think is a nice hotel planet, which it isn't. They get chased around the planet by monsters, and they escape. That, that That's a good explanation of, of 50 minutes dragged out quite badly mediocrely that's even a word what did you think of Orphan 55? Crap that's all we're straight to the point Liv. Um, can crap. you elaborate on more than just the word <laughs> crap before I actually before I stop you I must just say that what we have to make sure we do in this review, and what we, what we made sure we did before we watched it, is we took our minds out of what happened in the last two weeks, because it, it, it's easy to fall into the trap of looking at Spyfall, part one and two, and thinking, oh my god, how awesome is that? And then sort yeah. of adjusting your expectations to this, which I think we did. I'm absolutely fine at, it was an episode not being to a scale so as good as the first two parter yeah but at, le- but at least in an episode they're not running about for 15 minutes on a massive lecture about global warming i didn't see the point there was nothing scary about it there was nothing f- remotely threatening all the villains did was stood there and breathed that, that's all it did for me. Uh, they growled. Oh, the, the, the growled, wow. They, they opened their mouths a <laughs> the few growled, times. They growled, wow. Yeah, I mean, BBC... It, it's, it, it's, it, it's like so far, we had that amazing two-parter, like you say, and, and um, there you were right before the episode saying, right, last week's was brilliant, but, yeah, but let's not cloud our expectations... But what I feel like they've done, so it's took a step forward and then a massive step backwards. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I did completely, you know, under, we, I think we all understood that we were never going to get an episode that was as awesome as the first two. But the BBC didn't exactly help by saying that the cliffhanger to this episode was going to be something that's unmissable. Because I finished the episode feeling very sort of flat it was like the way that that, and I don't want to jump to the end of the episode but it was um, we won't go into too much detail but that was another aspect of it it was hyped that the end had had this cliffhanger and it just felt flat and that sort of epitomised the episode as a whole it was it built up the first 10 the first 10-15 minutes were building quite nicely and then it sort of hit a point and then it stayed there it's like I the ep- totally it's, disagree. No, but if you think about it, it's like if, you, if you're starting a car. Totally I think disagree. in the first ten minutes, when we didn't, when it wasn't, when it wasn't showing who the villains were, and you know the virus started kicking in and people started dying, it was going up a gear, and it got to like third gear, and then it just stopped. It's like the episode got to a point and stalled for the last thirty minutes. There were brief moments where it was like, oh, that's happened, and then it sort of dropped back down again. And it just flatlined to its conclusion, which was hyped by the BBC to be something unmissable. And in the end, 50 minutes of Doctor Who culminated in a message about global warming. I mean, I don't believe I want to get involved in this whole Doctor Who is politically correct thing. And that, you know, beneath the writing, the writers are trying to subliminally, you know, tell us messages about how to live our lives today or, or, or how certain, you know, equality and all this rubbish. I'm not into that, but... You can't help but think that this episode was just 50 minutes to tell us about global warming and that the world is heading to potentially a nuclear war and that we all have to be very, very careful about our future because this could happen. It just felt like it was just, it ended up just being a big lecture in the end. It it was crap. And I, I don't want to ever get drawn into Doctor Who is PC or anything like that, but I can't help but look at the ending and think that the whole point was to just try and send a message to the viewer. To make us think about our future in a certain way. I'm not. I don't, I don't know. It's just the, the ending. What the way the doctor was like, we all have to step up and we have to, you know, 
make decisions or and then it cut to the monstrous to say if you don't do this you're gonna become like this mm. what I don't get so I just felt from the beginning it all felt rushed to get it finished there were parts of it that were rushed that, that's all it felt like to me but what I don't understand what was going through Chris Chibnall's head in thinking let's have an episode all about global warming but it, it might have been his, it might have been Ed Hines idea whoever's idea it was yeah but still Chris Chibnall is the showrunner no of course Chris Chibnall has the final say in all this so what why in the right mindset would you think so it's a great episode to have an episode all about freaking global warming at uh, one of my pet hates is so it's people for, uh, forcing forcing things onto people. One of my pet hates, I, I, I hate it. Like forcing but, messages upon. Yeah, yes, exactly. Beliefs, um, so education, religion, f- food stuff, everything. It's one of my pet hates. This episode reminded me of that. Absolute crap. It, it it's that's the thing like I say with the whole first 20 minutes they land on a planet they meet characters there's a monster there's a virus that's coming in and you don't know who the monster is that was good Doctor Who that was like building up to a point and then they laid the foundations of you know it's a planet a hotel that has deliberately been built here so that it could naturally be taken over and they could terraform it so that it became a planet and that Kane was the one who manipulated the whole thing and that she would end up being rich because of this planet Mm. That that was fine. That was a great bit of storytelling, and that that worked well. And it was up to that point where I was thinking, "All right, so she's behind all this. Is she in league with the 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 deg degger the the deg the deg? deg. Um, is she in league with them? You know, is this all a setup? Is she is she trapped them all here? And I thought, you know, this could build up to something really really good. And that's what I mean. It got to that point, and then it just ended up being. I think it was from the moment they left the truck, it just became. Right, we'll we'll forget about what she did and who she is and the terraforming thing and that she wants it to be this and that and you know and that she knows all these things and th- who the deg are and stuff and it just sort of flatlined and for the rest of the episode it was just them running around aimlessly and that's the disappointing thing the episode the it hit a point and then it just pff, that was it just flatlined let's talk about a certain few things more in depth um, like I said like I said the first. 15 minutes, I thought, were, were pretty good. Landing on a planet. Normal Doctor Who stuff. Was there not a, at least the first, you know, like, for example, the old couple. He was about to propose to her. Oh. And he got taken. And I honestly thought that when he was getting taken and she, you know, she, they were an old couple being together, 46 years, whatever. And they were trying to rescue him. I was I was, I was behind that. Because I, I wanted them to rescue him. And it, it was, it did sort of, there was a bit of a dark twist when obviously... Kane killed him because he wanted them to, because of obviously what the dead had done to him. So did you not at least find that interesting? No. And not even when she sacrificed herself? Yeah, because the point being, we just found the side cast annoying, and, and I was absolutely sick of hearing the word, Benny! It was driving me mad! Like, what am I watching? Crap! Like I've said, it's just crap. <sighs> Well, let's talk about the side cast. I mean, one thing that I did feel was particularly rushed was the whole thing between Bella and Kane. Oh. I mean, that was just sort of all over the place. You know, what? It was pointless. Her character, Bella's character, started quite. You know, she was quite a, a likable character. Obviously, she was. Her and Ryan had this interesting relationship going on, and one minute she was, um, you know, saying how she doesn't have any parents. All of a sudden, she turns on a parent when we, out of nowhere, discover that she's her mother, which was mm. sort of felt completely out of the blue and, and again, rushed. Again. rushed. Um, and then all of a sudden, they went from pointing a gun at each other to then five minutes later, she wondering where Kane is. So suddenly she's went from wanting to kill her mother for what she did to then worrying about where she is. And then out of, out of nowhere, Kane then goes from being this very stubborn antagonist who doesn't care about anyone and just wants her plan to... to, to pull off to then sacrificing herself for everyone 
And then at the end, when Bella's Come about back. to sacrifice herself, she comes back out the blue and rescues her. I just felt like their relationship was just here, then it was there, then it was here, then it was there, then it was here, then it was there. And it didn't feel natural at all. It just felt both their characters were just up and down and pointless. all over the place. Absolutely pointless. Their characters were just sort of up and down and all over the place, which, you know, was a little bit sort of... You didn't quite know where you were with them. You couldn't get into the characters because you just didn't know what they were going to do. It just didn't feel natural than the relationship that they were trying to show with them too. The side cast with me were just dull. Did you... I mean, I agree with the about the old woman that she... You know, I, I felt bad for her with what was happening with her husband, but she was a, li, a little Thank bit on the annoying side. Burning. Burning. Is that all you heard? I was sick of hearing the word bloody Benny. The side cast with me, no, just... Annoying. Not about, not even about the two green-haired dudes. The, obviously, the kid who was always constantly the, trying the to. The kid was good. Yeah, the kid was good, and the his um. So his dad was alright, but that was about it. The only part I enjoyed about this episode, so was the beginning. So when Graham was so excited about a holiday, that that was that. Yeah. That was the only thing I liked about it. A definition, so of a pointless episode. Mm. I mean, one of the things, again, that excited me to begin with were the villains. And I loved how at the start of the episode they wouldn't show who they were. And this virus began to, you know, infiltrate the thing. And, you know, there was, a, again, there was another mystery behind who they were and what they were. And it just sort of flatlined again. I don't want to use the same word, flatlined, but it just, again, fell flat. Um, and I, I thought at first they were quite menacing villains, you know, when it was, we only saw the brief close-up of them. Mm. I thought, oh my God, they look, you know, and they were flashing lights yeah, and they weren't quite sure. Th- they did look kind of cool. And I, I wish I that they'd, that. I wish they'd have left it at that. But they just didn't do anything for me. Yeah. I wish they'd have left it at that because at times when they showed them full body shot, the CGI looked a bit iffy yeah. at times. Um, and yeah, they went from infiltrating this station which you know looked really cool how they were killing people off screen how it wasn't quite showing you what they were doing they sort of left it to your own imagination for you to imagine what they were doing which i thought was great again in the first 15 or so minutes but again once they left the the truck because even when they were in the truck they, these creatures were banging on the doors it felt mm. a bit midnighty but then they got out and i think this that is definitely the moment the episode just just completely fell on its face when they left the truck and we suddenly started to see tons of them, it just made them seem so ineffective. I'd rather them have had one that was chasing them constantly that you couldn't quite see, rather than just showing us about a million of them that just yeah. spent the episode standing still and not doing anything. That, that, that's what I mean. Every It seemed like every every scene they were behind them, but they were never running after them. They were never really running after them. and were never doing anything. There were a few scenes where people yeah sacrificed themselves, but... They just seemed like they were always just sort of standing behind them, but never properly on their tail. And I wish they'd have maybe killed off a few more side characters just to try and give them a little bit more menace. You know, as the episode goes on, the numbers start dropping, less people yeah. start surviving until... A bit like Voyage of the Damned, there's no one left at the end. Yeah. But there was a few sacrifices, but it wasn't enough to for these villains to feel... And even the no. twist when they were humans, you know? I mean, that was a, a good twist, but by that point, I just looked at them as this generic... Villain that looked good but didn't do anything. Exactly, exactly the same. So with series eleven villains, they look quite cool, but they don't do anything for the whole episode. Mm. They had potential, especially with them being it's human just mutants. So frustrating and disappointing to have to have such a brilliant two parter, amazing two parter that like everyone liked, but I knew myself that this episode was obviously not going to be on par, but at least make it a friggin' good story. So with, yeah, so with some entertainment values, hmm. this is the thing, like, these are the episodes that stand out, so in the wrong reasons, so at the end of the series. Hmm. I don't mind fillers, so it was a decent story. But this had nothing. 
Yeah, it had it, nothing. It sort of ran out of ideas halfway through. It's so frustrating, and and even like I said, and like I said, my pet hate those people forcing things onto people. I can't stand it. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't particularly like it either. When it feels like, especially with A this, lecture. especially like this episode, when you know the whole episode led to this conclusion, and it just ended with. The doctor just trying to lecture us all on, you know, and I, I'm sure it was written in mind to be this doctor moment, this incredible speech where she's, you know, she says what it is to be human and the doctor lectures us on the world and it's fantastic. But just after the episode and how it had gone, you want that upbeat climax, that that big ending, and it just fell so flat. I just, I remember after the episode finished, I paused it and I looked at you and I went, what? Yeah, exactly. Because I, I I didn't get what the point of it was. Was the whole episode just meant to be a lesson on that we have to look after the world today? Do- Doctor Who's meant to be a, a sci-fi entertainment show. It's not meant to be something that you know is, it tells us how to live our lives. Exactly. It, that, it, that. It can in small ways, like but like I was saying, I I I oh. I, it, Doctor Who's good for that in small me. ways. You know, like for instance, the the the, the speech at the end of the Zygon inversion. Yeah, that did. That's the perfect example because it meant something to the episode and it led to a great ending. It didn't feel hollow. It had some stub. It had some substance to it. That speech was like the perfect balance between, you know, in a factual, real life way, teaching us something, but also in the fictional episode of Doctor Who, in the narrative, it taught the Zygon something. Yeah. So it worked in both real life and Doctor Who. The ending to this and the whole speech, it just didn't feel like it had any impact on the story, any impact on the narrative. It felt like the whole episode, 45 minutes build up, was just leading to five minutes of just lecture. It just felt so hollow and shallow and flat. The ending of the episode just, it didn't have me going, you know what, that was a great episode of Doctor Who that taught me things. I ended up going, what was the point of that? And it's frustrating that a whole episode was wasted on that. Yeah, that's why I agree. Like, so I like learning about new things. Mm. Of course I do. Absolutely nothing wrong with that. And yeah, I mean, I mean maybe what they could have done. So it was the same idea, yeah, but executed in like um, so a sci-fi way. Mm. In a more fictional from way. Lecture. Yeah. A lecture. Yeah, it's a shame. So. It's yeah. Wasted. Absolute wasted. I think it's, you know, we can say for the, the side cast and the villains and the story in itself were good to a point. What about the companions then? Graham, Ryan, and Yaz. Graham, fantastic. Ryan and Yaz n- n- never did much really, but just walk about. Hmm. It, 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 and this, and this is how it, it, it feels a bit series 11. Graham was that perfect. Absolutely perfect comic relief. The and humor, I, the humor. I laughed so many times in this episode because he is just such a likable, just genuine guy who would be exactly like any of us in this scenario. He just, you know, he, he, he's it's in... like in that scene when, you know, when all the alarms were going off and even there he was sunbathed, he was enjoying his drink. Straight away he said, Christ, if this is you, Doc. <laughs> yeah. That's the thing with Graham. His humour for me just always hits the spot. It does. Especially like when he like when he was um, saying, I don't know what to do, I'm a bus driver. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he is just he, he is one of the most relatable people and yeah. characters ever. Everyone can look at him and can relate to him because they know someone who's like him or they react in the same way. He's absolutely fantastic. Yaz sort of went back into oh. series eleven, Yaz. Just didn't do anything but follow the doctor about she and was ask the, questions again. She was there for the woman, but other than that, she was just there. At least Ryan had this interesting dynamic going on with Bella. You know, this girl who he got mm. to know and they had something in common. And as much as Bella's character was here, there and everywhere, you know, there was a part of me that felt a bit bad for Ryan at the end when she was left behind and he felt a bit sad about it. There was a small part of me that felt for him at that moment because he's, he'd bonded with her. So at least Ryan mm. had that. But Yaz again, and this is going back to series 11, Yaz, she was just there for the asking questions. Walking about. Walking about. Just there to do, just do. bounce off the doctor. And, and that that was it. No. Really. And I know they can't... 
give everyone. This is the problem with having a crowded TARDIS team. They can't That's give. They can't give everyone the same amount of you know story time and 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 you know amount of lines and not everyone can have such an impact on an episode. But why couldn't Yaz have been the one who had this romantic interest? You know, it just feels like she's fell back into the background again in so this episode. So always seems to be Ryan and Graham getting the action, mm-hmm. the love interest, but never Yaz. And the thing what worries me, again, from watching this episode, so it's like these filler episodes that we, we sometimes get, what's going to worry me? So the crowded TARDIS team it always leads to one conclusion, so with somebody not doing anything. Mm. Yeah. And that, again, looks like to be Yaz. Yeah. I'm just desperate for them to... Because the, the opening two-parter was so bloody good. And I'm just desperate for them to keep that momentum going. I want the series to just keep pushing, pushing, yeah. pushing. Keep going up gears. Obviously, we're not going to get episodes like Spyfall every week. We know that. We can't expect that. Of course we can't. But just keep... Just carrying this momentum and this... This episode could have at least been, you know, a decent episode that just kept the momentum going, but it just feels like, like you said, it took a step back into old habits. Oh, it's like a massive step back, like, come on, Chibnall. You've learnt enough from Series 11 and what went wrong. Mm. So we're like, all he could have done was looked at this episode and said, yeah, we're nearly there. Let, um, there's, um... So now all we need to do, change it a few. That would have been fine. Yeah. The the only it's, reference, oh. and we'll be silly as on to the Doctor, the only reference to the story arc that got mentioned was at the very beginning when they said, have you fixed your grumpy face yet? Yeah. And I thought, great, great we're yeah. going to continue with this. But it was never mentioned again. Oh, that's what I mean. So let's talk about the Doctor, because obviously, um, you know, spoilers for if you've not seen our reviews of the first two episodes, but... For the first time at the end of, of, at the end of, well, I'd say during part two of Spyfall, we started to finally see her as the Doctor and our perspective began. Nearly there for me. Well, Nearly there. I think it's fair to say our perspective did begin to change. Yeah. It did. Mine did. Yours was beginning to change. And we said we accept that we're not going to get serious, you know, upset, angry Geordie every single week again. We're not expecting that. But obviously we were just were hoping that what happened last week would make us see her differently. Mm. Did you see her differently this week? Or did the Doctor like a few things, take a step back? Part, part, I was thinking, this is going well with Geordie. I think I'm getting there. Mm. And because that was the scene... So when she was beautifully t- um, um, telling Kane, is it? Kane. Kane. Uh, uh, and saying, like, no, we are doing this. Mm. We are doing that. Fantastic. And then all of a sudden, she went back to yapping on. At a thousand miles an hour. And doing my absolute heading. Again. So you'd say she sort of took another step forward but then another step back another step back I absolutely agree thank god um I god. I couldn't agree more I I saw her more as the doctor in this episode in moments like that at the beginning because I thought she was very authoritative um she led the episode a lot more she did than what she maybe used to uh, maybe she didn't maybe this is a, just a perspective a perception thing like I said because of what we saw last week maybe we see her differently um, and I thought she led a lot more. I sort of was behind what she was saying a lot more. She was more the centrepiece, and my eyes were drawn to her more than they had been before. But there are still these scenes where she has to explain every little detail of every single thing that's going on, every scene, everything. She's like, I'm doing this, and I'm going to do that, and it's going to lead to this, and when we've done this, I'm going to do that. And it's like she's writing out a map for us to follow. And it's just... Oh. It, it, so it's these scenes... I'm so just... Oh. It's, so it's these scenes where she's yapping on and yapping on. So I'm sat there thinking, well, 
well, what is the point in watching the rest of the episode just just because because we know what's going to happen because you would bloody shut up? Yeah. It's... Oh, it, it just, I, I, mm, so I understand that, that, yeah, she ain't my favourite doctor. I completely get that. But, yeah, yeah, but all I want for her to have some more good, powerful things. She's supposed to be a doctor. She is supposed to be the one that commands the episode from minute one to the end. But, yeah, but in this episode, she caught my attention early on. And then, and then all of a sudden, she starts yapping on. And now I am like, oh, Christ, here we go. Freaking get. Yeah. I mean, I completely understand that, you know, the Doctor is the one that has to sort of translate the techno-babble sci-fi stuff into English. Yeah. You know, as viewers, we're not going to know what an ionising membrane is or whatever the hell it's called. <laughs> you know, we're not going to know what that is. She's got to be the interpreter who turns this sci-fi Doctor Who world, you know, sci-fi, you know, jargon into stuff we can understand. That's absolutely fine. And she has to do that for her companions as well. I don't know if it's the delivery. I don't know if it's how much it's written, but it just feels like she just talks that little bit too much. Just always. And I just... Like... I feel like she would... She would have... Her lines would have more of an impact if she just said them differently, if it was more... Oh, just shorter, shut up. Shorter, powerful. You know what I found extremely ironic in this episode? What? And I sat there and I thought, I don't want to make a joke about this. She was the one who... And they were, they were told, don't talk too much, you'll run out of oxygen. She was the one who ran out of oxygen first. <laughs> well, that's what I mean. And I sat because there... she never should up. I sat there and I thought, that's what you get for <laughs> yapping on. <laughs> yapping on. Yapping on, like... So I'd like it more... Or if she'd be more commanding, so a few jokes in there, but yeah, but yap, don't let. I will oh, say oh, there she... were much less cringy jokes this week. True. True. Much less of them cringy True. jokes, which I was very happy with. Um, so I wouldn't say that she's lost momentum from last week. I'm still very much in the same place I was, <laughs> but there's still them niggly things that maybe we're just gonna have to get used to. It's, Maybe we're it's, just never going to like that side of her doctor. I just don't it's, know. It's just what gets me. So as episodes like this worry me for the rest of the season, mm. the, the series. Yeah. It does. Yeah, I get I that. can't help it. Oh, it's such a shame that, like, this weekend, I was looking for this weekend and I was thinking to myself, do you know what? Sunday, Doctor Who is on. Really looking forward to this. And then all of a sudden, next week will come, oh yeah, uh, do you know what's back on? Who? Who cares? That's what I feel I'm going to be like again. Well, I'm still very much excited for the next episode because of the story arc. It's as simple as that. Um, I'm just hoping that obviously this is just one of them, I don't know, it's the curse of the black spot of series 12 mm. or the smile of series 12 or... To think Please about. no more episodes like this. Yeah, I, oh. you know every every series has a number of episodes that just sort of exist for a reason. And you know, <laughs> let's hope and, and spinning this into a positive that this is the episode, you know, that filler episode that you know the fear her of series twelve. I hope so. You know, maybe this. You know, let's just hope that we're getting that sort of filler episode over the way. You know, out the way early. Mm. And next week we can crack on, and this is a small little blip where the gears have sort of dropped a bit, and we can just crack on next week. I think that's the best way of looking so. at it. Um, so anyway, I think, I think we've concluded pretty much everything. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm gonna give it a straight up five, straight down the middle, because it started well, but then it completely drifted. So it was as I think it was as average and as mediocre as a Doctor episode can be, for me. I was tempted to drop it down to four because of the potential that wasn't fulfilled and how the ending was. You know what? No, I'm not going to. I'm not going to. I'm going to stick with the five. But yeah, my, my main bugbears, and I'm not going to say the Doctor was a bugbear because there are still little characteristics I don't like, but she was still good. Yaz is the concern for me, but obviously the big thing is that the episode just stalled 20 minutes in and just did not recover and just sort of 
teetered out and ended very, very flatly. You've got your hand on your face. What's your mm. rating? A two. Two! A two! That's hell bent levels a of two. bad. A two! <laughs> just can't stand episodes like this. I learned nothing and I was bored. I think your rating will change upon a, a few weeks of reflection. I think it is just, you know, we've just watched it. We're a little bit let down, especially because they hide the ending as well. I rated it too just because it didn't do anything. Maybe I'm being generous. I don't know. How on earth can you give an episode a five? I just think it's just... It's a it, five! Because there's worse. There's worse. In the Forest of the Night's worse. Oh. Hellbent's worse. Oh. Fear her's worse. Yeah, for you, Hellbent's worse. Hellbent's the worst thing that's ever existed. <laughs> no, all I'm saying... All I'm saying is there are much worse episodes that, that just frustrate me. This was just the epitome of just average. It was just average. It wasn't... <laughs> it wasn't even average. It was crap. Well, there we go. That's that. That's our opinion. Um, <laughs> let us know what your opinion is in the comment section below. Um, what you thought of the episode. What you'd rate it out to 10 if you agree with me. If you agree with Liv. <laughs> Probably um, not. Not many people agree with me. As always, like this video. As we know, you're very black and white. Yes, it's, either, very. it's either amazing or it's awful. There's no in between. Um, like this video if you've enjoyed it. Oh, of course, dear. subscribe to this channel for <laughs> reviews of every episode of Series 12 as well as cool little theory videos in between. Hit the bell to be notified when we upload every single video here on the channel. And um, the next video on the channel should hopefully be me when I'm going to try and put together the Masters timeline and um yeah try and see where sasha down's master falls in the timeline of the master's live so if you want to see that hit the subscribe button but until next time guys you can like us on facebook follow us on twitter and even subscribe on patreon if you could be so kind but until next time guys thank you very much for watching see you guys next time